Hey everybody, Nick here, and today we're going to reassemble and maintain this little guy right here. This is a um, KnifeJoy exclusive uh, Spydeco smock in 20 CV steel. And a little bit of backstory here, I actually started doing this disassembly just, you know, because I, I wanted to clean the knife up, right? Um, and uh, then my wife called me to dinner, and you know, I'm sorry, but Indian food wins, right? And I wasn't filming it at the time, because it was just, you know, one for my own private, uh, you know, private collection. I thought, you know, eh, screw it. I don't need to go there. Um, but then, you know, when I got back upstairs, it, it was actually going to work on the, the, the assembly and such. I was thinking to myself, you know, hey, why not make a video, right? Um, you know, this week, lots of folks are bored, so let's go on ahead and drop something. Um, one thing, though, I do want to mention real quick. Uh, like I said, this is a Knife Joy exclusive here. This is a knife that they had ordered. And as a matter of fact, I think this might be the very first sprint run of a knife coming out of Tai Chung. That's a dealer exclusive, that is. Um, and so that's kind of cool in and of itself. But I know already I've got people typing in the comments, oh my! God, Nick, you said no limited editions, no sprint runs. Um, to an extent, yeah, you're right. Um, A, this isn't, I'm not doing a review. This is just like a video that I'm making because why not? Because you're all bored and I figured why. Hey, sure. Um, but more importantly, um, this knife is still in stock at the time I'm filming this video, and uh, it's actually, uh, I think Knife Joy, they've tended to reorder their sprints when they've got a problem, or when they sell through them. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not super, you know, I'm not super worried about that. Then again, I'm not super worried about it anyways, because it's my damn collection. And that actually brings me to my um, the, the, my next point uh, for today that I've been thinking about, you know, it, partly in response to this knife here, right? Um, so, I, you know, I get this guy because I'm actually very interested in the knife. Um, I like the Spyderco smock a fair amount. And if you're curious about the tools, nickshabazz.com slash tools. Anyways, I digress. Um, I, but I really, I, I like the Spydeco smock. Um, it's a very nice little knife and there's a lot to like about it. Um, there, there are parts of it, certainly, you know, the, the, the smock situation itself was a little less than ideal, um, given my kind of past. But at the same time, um, there, there's a lot to like here. And, you know, having this extra little, I like this smooth G10 a lot. I think it's a very attractive material. We saw it in the, uh, the Velotin along with a couple of other Spydecos. Um, but, you know, to me, that, that, you know, it's nice. It feels a bit like a win. Oh, there you are, you little bugger. <clears throat> right underneath here is the little tiny spring that the ball sits on. Uh, I've been looking for this spring for like 10 minutes before freaking dinner because um, I thought it had yeeted itself across the room, but no, it hadn't. Anyways, I digress. Um, but anyways, this is a, uh, it's an interesting piece, and I like the button compression lock, and, you know, I think it was, and especially now with the steel upgrade and with getting out of that G10, or the carbon fiber thing that I didn't care for, it to me feels a bit like a win, so this was a knife I was interested in personally. But one of the really weird things that happens when you, and you know, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but when you become a little bit more of a thing, uh, when you've got a channel or something like that, and you end up with some people who follow you, and some people who follow you both because they enjoy you, and people who follow you because they hate you, which is apparently a thing that people do. I wish I had that kind of free time. Anyways, I digress. Um... But one of the things that seems to happen is that people feel uh, a lot more connected to your collection and your, your relationship to collecting gets fundamentally different than it was beforehand. Um, you know, when you are just a random jackass collecting knives, given I'm just a random jackass collecting knives, but when you're one without a YouTube channel, Really, the only person you have to answer to for your collection is yourself. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, potentially your partner. You know, you should be a, a good partner and make sure that you're not being irresponsible. But anyways, uh, all that responsibility stuff. We don't need to talk about that today. We're talking about <laughs> we're talking about consumerism. I'm uh, sorry, but um, yeah, normally you never even think twice about what other people think of your collection because it's your own damn collection. But once you get into the, once you enter this world, things start to look a little bit differently. Um, and you get people who are not necessarily, I mean, certainly people are always judging your collection, right? You post something on Instagram, people are looking at it like, ah, oh, nice collection. Oh, that's kind of weird. Whatever. But at this level, people start having strong opinions about how you should be collecting. Um, and in some cases, that can look like, you know, oh, Nick, you said X in one of your videos, but now you've done Y. Are you a hypocrite? Should I stop believing you? Or, or it can look like people who, um, you know, feel like, uh, you know, you selling something is a personal betrayal um, because you said you liked that and you sold it, therefore you must not like it and whatnot. And that gets very weird very, very quickly. Not like, I mean, look, I'm a very lucky man. It is a good problem set to have, right? But at some level, um, it wasn't something that I anticipated really at all as I was getting into this. 
you know, it's kind of strange to me um, to have the conversation with oneself about, well, you know, should I get that knife just because it is going to be, it, it's a sprint run and, you know, you're on the record as not being a major fan of sprint runs and uh, wishing that, you know, and to be fair, I don't necessarily object to sprint runs per se. My biggest issue is when they are limited by design, uh, when they, they, they are limited and dead before they're even released, that kind of thing. That's what bugs me more than anything, but I've got a whole video on that. My, uh, my policy there is, is well established. But it's weird to think about something that you would just buy for your own enjoyment in the light of, well, how are people going to react to my buying this? Um, kind of a strange world, right? And at some level, the route to hap uh, I'm sorry, the road to happiness is not through listening to what other people have to say about your life and following that fastidiously. I mean, certainly there's some benefit to um, the blending in with the crowd, so to speak, but at a, at a very real level, you should live your life for you. And indeed, I live my life for me. Um, you know, th th this particular knife was interesting to me, even though, <clears throat> and in fact, a, you know, I, I've been going back and forth as to whether to pick one of these guys up for a while. <coughs> Pardon me. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's just, it's kind of a weird situation to be in, right? That people have strong opinions about what you yourself should have in your collection. And they're not at all hesitant to share those opinions. Uh, and so, you know, that's kind of a, uh, it's one of the strange parts of being a reviewer that I never anticipated at all. Um, and, you know, so people have these very strong feelings, too, about um, things staying in my collection or not. And I mentioned this in a couple of my disassembly videos. By the way, I'm just pressing this lock bar in here to, you know, get everything squared up. So everything pops into place. <clears throat> but anyways, um, and by the way, I did, in fact, just leave that second detent ball and spring out. Um, and the reason for that is simple. I want to see what the action looks like without it. But uh, nonetheless, the um, it's just, it's a very interesting world uh, to, to be in. It is a good problem to have in a lot of ways, but it's it's a weird problem to have. And so I, I've thought about this, on, you know, on a number of different occasions. You know, people will ask me things too, like, okay, um, just to give you a sense of what's going on here, and I don't think this is blowing anybody's cover or anything, um, tomorrow afternoon, I believe, I'm going to be going on the, um, the, the, the Blade HQ is doing, you know, a series of Blade Banter things, and they're doing them all remotely because, well, you know, it makes sense, right? Um, uh, that's, that's the world we're living in at the moment. So, uh, and the question posed to me is, Nick, what are your top five knives? And this got me kind of thinking down this road again, because saying what are my top five, kni five knives is an intensely personal question. And it's likely to involve knives that are a little bit more difficult to get. These are uh, parts of my collection that are sort of unique parts of my collection. Um, and so, you know, my favorite knives is, it's a good question. It's one I'm happy to answer, and it's one that I'll answer there. But it's not the same thing as what are, my, what are the top favorite knives that people can get their hands on, right? Because I have some stuff that's a little tricky to get a hold of. <clears throat> For instance, a Spyderco Sleash Bowie. They're, they're not really widely available at the moment. Um, I, I really desperately hope that somebody brings them back, but uh, the, frankly, it's Spyderco does. Uh, it's the, the, the main somebody. But uh, nonetheless, you know, th those are really hard to get a hold of at the moment. So if I put that as my, you know, if my list was entirely, in, you know, I really like the whole Spectre. But unfortunately, uh, you know, those are hard to get a hold of at the moment, too. Uh, and so, you know, giving that list in terms of my own personal emotions is not necessarily the most productive things. It just ends up coming up like, oh, you can't get all this stuff. Um, and that sucks. That's, that's really not great. And so kind of the compromise I ended up coming up with and, you know, talking at least you know, right now in principle, talking to Zach with, uh, at Blade HQ about, is that I'm gonna, uh, I'll give two lists. I'll give sort of my own personal list, a little bit of Blade play, my own personal list, and then I'll give a second list that handles more specifically, um, things that are widely and easily available, sort of favorite production knives, stuff that's out there that's, you know, really good, and I, I think that's going to be the list that's going to be more interesting and relevant for more people, right? Um, you know, the, the knives, my favorites that they can get. And so this, again, highlights that weird discontinuity between, you know, what are my favorites as a collector and what are my favorites as a public figure? I don't know, that sounds pretentious, but I'm also pretentious, so that's probably why, right? Um, but anyways, so that's sort of a, it's a weird dichotomy. 
And so I find myself pretty regularly thinking about this. And I've, I've had this kind of debate with myself many times before, right? Uh, one of the times it was about uh, screwdrivers. Um, I talked about that because I used to have those, um, the, the, the fancy screwdrivers um, that were, you know, pretty good and frankly, not bad at all, but they weren't necessarily the thing that I'd recommend to everybody. So I went back to these guys, which I think might be a little bit less ergonomic in some ways, but at the same time, they're much more obtainable and they're much more recommendable. And so this was another case where I think what I personally appreciate, um, although actually the Scout Leather Drivers, they, they, they weren't like, oh my God, I missed them. Like I've never thought, oh God, I should go back. Oh, but for my channel. Um, then if the channel shut down tomorrow, I probably wouldn't switch back. Anyways, but I've had this feeling before in dealing with, you know, the, the screwdriver situation. I've had this feeling before in thinking about selling things. You know, I've had people tell me, you know, Nick, like for instance, recently, I sold my Graham Knives Razel, um, the, the, the GMT, the mid-tech. And people are like, oh my God, Nick, that's a fixture on the channel. How could you do that? It feels like it's not your channel anymore. And at some level, you know, I kind of get it, right? That's a, That was one of the very first high-end knives that I really, that I reviewed, that I really loved, etc. Um, But the simple fact is it wasn't getting carried. And I almost felt bad for the little guy. It's like, I want you to go. And now I know for a fact that the new owner, um, he posted it up on Reddit. And, you know, he was over the moon with it. Both, you know, that it was that one with that specific backspacer and whatnot. And that you know, it was his knife now. And so, you know, it, I thought long and hard about, you know, can I sell that? Is that allowed as a, as a YouTuber? Can I do that? And, you know, ultimately the conclusion I came to is it's your damn life, Nick. Do what you want to do. And so that's kind of where I'm landing on it. Um, and so on occasion, um, there's that weird divergence between what would I expect everybody to do? And, you know, at some level, this is a classical philosophical quandary, right? We're looking at the implementation of uh, Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, uh, you know, acting by such maxim that you would will to be in uh, universal law. So basically, sh should I do only those things that I believe everybody should do? Or, you know, am I allowed to do things that are, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend to everybody else? Or if everybody did them, it wouldn't make sense, you know? Um, and so that's kind of a weird, it's a weird microcosm to end up in here um, as a gear reviewer and just as a, a random jackass collector. But that's kind of one of the weirdest things about all this, like I said, is that collecting becomes fundamentally different. When you buy something that is just for you, you end up in a world that is, uh, it ends up feeling very different than if you're just a random jackass and you buy something that's just for you. At that point, it's between you, maybe your partner, maybe not, and just your, your life generally speaking. And that is, of course, assuming you're partnered. And I don't imagine your dog is something's going to care about what you pick up gear-wise, unless it's a new Frisbee, in which case they're going to be pretty psyched about it, assuming they catch Frisbees. All the dogs I've really dealt with were more in the you know, uh, you throw a ball at them and they're like, uh, well, you throw a ball to, away from them and they're like, ah, oh, that was really cool. You should do that again. And they just stand there. Anyways, I digress. Um, but yeah, so it's just, it's one of those weird things. People always say, you know, what's it like being, you know, the, the, the collector? And it's like, it's fundamentally different than being a random collector. And, you know, I'm happy. I'm, like I said, I'm very grateful. And, you know, it allows me the chance to, you know, pretty guiltlessly pick up some random new piece from my collection here and, um, you know, to enjoy it. And, you know, is this guy going to stick around forever? I don't know. But at the very least, it's a weird enough knife and it's a compelling enough knife, and especially with these little upgrades to the, the, the new handle. It's like, yeah, I think uh, I'll keep this one around for a little while. But it just makes things a little different and maybe in a way that most people didn't understand. Um, look, a weird video. Kind of out of nowhere, but uh, it'll be an extra there. So uh, if you didn't care for it, well, wait for tomorrow. You'll get something else. But uh, there you go. I hope this is interesting to you and uh, that uh, if you are interested in one of these guys, you're able to pick one up. Hopefully this won't make them all sell out. Um, but for the most part, uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.